I should not need to make this video, but controlling indentation guides in VS Code is so complicated that it took me almost a day to set it up exactly how I wanted, and in the end, I still had to use a loophole to get it right. Let me show you what I learned. Hey, Vlad here from devinsideview.com, welcome to another video. If you're new here, you should know that this is mostly a Scala channel and especially since Scala 3.3, which is about to come out in a couple of weeks, we fully switched to Python-like optional indentation-based syntax. Now, a long time ago, I made a short about the fact that indentation guides are super useful for indentation-based languages, but I haven't shown you how to set it up. And in all honesty, I shouldn't need to. There should be like one flag, but instead it's like five of them in VS Code. Let's back up for a second. About a month ago, VS Code released a feature that allows you to import and export your user profiles full of settings, key bindings, and extensions. And so I created a VS Code profile for Scala and I made a video about it. So you might want to check it out if you missed it. What I'll show you today is not part of it, but I might add it. I haven't decided yet. Unrelated to that, VS Code used to have a very popular bracket highlighting plugin. Essentially, it would use a configurable color palette, I believe it was up to six colors, and it would cycle through those colors when it was coloring your brackets. So if you have a lot of nested brackets, your code would start looking like a rainbow, which is what some of you wanted apparently. Now at some point VS Code natively implemented this feature and so the plugin became obsolete. Then over time they added knobs, bells, and whistles around it to control, you know, specific indentation highlights, maybe active indentation, and a bunch of other things. In my opinion, they made it overly complicated. In fact, even though there are so many knobs, I couldn't figure out a way to make it do what I really wanted it to do, namely highlight only active indentation, even though there are a bunch of settings that actually contain the word active in them. The setting that I needed is still missing to this day. Fortunately, there is a workaround. I consider it a hack even, and I'll tell you all about it right after the message from our sponsors, scalajobs.com and rustjobs.dev. Make sure to check out the links in the description if you're looking for a job. This video is also brought to you by awesome people like yourself who support me on platforms like Patreon, GitHub sponsors, or by joining the YouTube membership program. Your contributions go right back into this channel. They allow me to pay for a video editor who frees some of my time, which I then again usually spend with you, whether it's during live streams or answering your questions on Discord. There's many of you and only one of me, so all it takes is a dollar. Thank you. Cool. So what you see here is my fully configured VS Code instance. And this is a Scala 2 project. In fact, it's a Hello World project. And over here, I have a Scala 3 project. Okay. In a couple of seconds, we're going to switch to a different profile, which has only the settings about indentation, right? So because these are the settings, these are the only settings that we need to talk about. By the way, the code that I'm going to show you today is pretty much irrelevant. It just so happens to be from the previous video about MUnit and Expecti. So if you really want to understand it, you know, check out the previous video. By the way, before we finally get into it, if you're a Vim user and you are used to navigate your cursor based on curly braces and now they're gone in Scala 3, check out the Vim indent object plugin. For example, if I go to line 19, I can do VII for inside indentation or around I for around indentation to, to grab this one, right? And so I can keep going like this, right? So I can go well around indentation. Right? Or notice how my cursor is now at line 24. So if I do visually inside indentation, it would also mark this insert line, right? So VII, and we get this one. All right, cool. So let's go back to Scala 2. Now, the reason we're starting with Scala 2 is because a bunch of settings are actually related to brackets. Okay, so uh, what I will show you right now is I will just open the settings. So again, like this is the fully configured instance. Uh, notice how I have a bunch of red stuff over here and a bunch of red stuff over there. It's because during the preparation for this video, I realized that a bunch of these settings were unnecessary. Okay, so these are all the kinds of settings that come for guys, right? So there's uh, bracket pairs, uh, you can set it to, you know, true, false, and also active uh, bracket pairs, horizontal, highlight active bracket pair, uh, highlight active indentation, and also indentation true. Okay, and at the bottom over here are all the colors, right? So this is the colors for the brackets themselves. This is the colors for the uh, for the bracket guides, and these are the colors for the indentation guides. Okay, so the thing is that uh, if you notice over here, if you're dealing with brackets, then over here, if I actually comment it in. Okay, so if I go over here and I go like this, then it will show me that the options are active, false and true. Okay, however, so I'm going to do this one, but I'm going to comment it out. However, for this one, for indentation, right, the only options that we have over here are true and false. Okay, so I'm going to comment it out again, right? And even though, you know, there is also like additional here for highlight uh, active bracket pair and active indentation. Okay, so 
um, the thing is that like what I wanted it to do is I wanted it to only highlight the active indentation, right? So uh, if I start like going down like this, you will see that, you know, this is this bracket. So this is only the active indentation here as well, here as well, here as well. Let's go down to something like this. Okay. So as you can see, it sort of like jumps around to depending on where my cursor is, depending on uh, which scope I'm in, right? And in Scala 3, it works exactly the same way, right? So there you go. Only the, the active indentation. Okay, and so uh, over here, right, for indentation, it didn't have the setting, right? So for Scala 2, I configured it pretty quickly, but when it came to Scala 3, it was always like showing all of indentations, and I finally figured out how to do it, and it turns out that I don't need any of these settings, okay? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to switch to uh, my other profile, right, which is a, um, you know, a profile that I started from scratch. I called it indentation so that we have like only these settings so that we can play around with it. Okay, so we're going to cut it uh, all out from the video because it's taking forever for VS Code to restart and then I need to reload it a couple of times. So let me set it all up and we'll cut it out from the video. A few moments later. Cool. So as you can see, this is pretty much the default profile. I only installed the uh, metals extension to have Scala syntax highlighting. And I also, you know, I'm inside of WSL, so I had to install this one. And I also have this. This is my favorite extension called reload. It just puts a reload button. If I press it, VS Code would reload. All right. So uh, again, we don't really care about the code itself. I just wanted to show you the settings. So this one was in uh, was added by Metal, so we don't really care about it. Uh, I, I set the font font size to 22 just so that it's a little bit bigger for the video. I enabled semantic highlighting for Metals just because it's prettier with it. Then uh, I enabled uh, breadcrumbs, even though it's enabled by default, and it's this thing I figured because we're talking about indentation, we might as well enable it. And I also enabled sticker scroll because again we're talking about indentation. Okay, so if you're not familiar with um, with sticker scroll, uh, basically like see this this function, uh, we don't see its beginning, and uh, therefore it actually should have should have showed us uh, where it begins, but uh, probably its provider is not configured correctly, so it actually should have shown uh, like this line over here, right? But basically, like usually, see how like over here, right? So this is the method. Uh, even though the beginning is out of scope, we 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 see the sticky version of it. So see, like, this is line twenty six, and this is line thirty. Again, this this video is not about this. Okay, so uh, these are the default settings for indentation guide. So as you can see, everything is disabled here. Everything is commented out here. Okay. So this is how they look like by default. So you see all of them, but you also see the active one, right? So if you go up and down, you know, you see the active one. And I only wanted to see the active one, all right? Which should be super simple. Okay, and in fact, there are settings for for the active ones, right? So, for example, over here, uh, if I say bracket pairs uh, only active, like this is what it should have done, right? However, if I enable this one, actually, what it does is that it highlights the active one even more, right? So it's so as you can see, it's like this, okay? And then it has uh, a couple of settings, for example, for this uh, horizontal line, you know, you can set it to false, and it starts doing it like this, right? It sounds all super cool, but there's no such such thing for indentation, right? So if I go to Scala three, right? So if I like this is you know the same settings, right? So I just I just change it, right? So as you can see, if I go up and down, there's no such thing. So there's this and there's that. Let's see, does it help? No, it doesn't, right? So basically, I was messing around with it until I finally figured out what I needed to do. It has a thing uh, over here at the very bottom. Actually, let's go back to Scala 2 because Scala 2, you know, the demonstration for Scala 2 is is, is better. There is a setting over, over here uh, inside of Workbench Color Customizations, which I will consider to add to my um, uh, to my Scala uh, VS Code profile. Uh, editor and then guide background. And so there is a trick, okay? So you can go over here, and this is a short notation for the, you know, for the hexadecimal stuff. So, right, so you can use like six characters or three characters. Or in this case, actually, we can use eight characters or, or four. Okay, so let's start with six. Okay, so let's make it green, right? So we're going to go zero, zero, FF, zero, zero, right? So this is green. Okay, so now this means that all the indentations, except for the, for the current one, are green, right? However, what we can also do is we can pass in transparency, right? And if you make transparency zero, they will pretty much disappear. And it looks like this is exactly what I wanted, right? This is all I wanted all along. This is already fixed, right? So both for Scala 2 and Scala 3, it works exactly like I want it to work. All right? So in fact, it really doesn't matter which color you pass in because it's going to be made transparent. Also, you can click over here and you can see the uh, that the transparency button is, like, is now over here, right? So if I drag it up, right, we'll start seeing the color. Well, maybe not because it's black, right? So if we go... Uh, make it F like this, and then zero, zero like that. So again, if I hover over here and I start bringing it up, bringing it up I'm going to start seeing that it's zero. Maybe I should need, I need to go like this. Yeah, there you go. I should, I should have saved the file. 
in any case. So we can use the, um, sorry, I'm used to MK bindings, okay? So all we need to do is we need to do 0, 0, 0 for, you know, pretty much black, and then another 0 for transparency. That's literally all we need to do, you know, video done. But I consider this basically a hack, okay? So the next thing that you might want to do is you might want to change its color. And you change this color by using the setting, editor and then guide active background, okay? And you need to do, you know, level 1, level 2, level 3, right? So it depends, depends, right? So I'm going to enable all of them. Um, this one is uh, very similar, you know, th this one is from my theme, which is uh, Capuchin, uh, and it's actually Capuchin Frappe, okay? So it's, it's red, and notice that it also has, you know, a transparency of 50%, right? So 79 is the hexadecimal 127, which is half of 256. And so um, all, of, all of the indentations now are red. Obviously, you can choose the color that you want. I just highly recommend that you use a little bit of a transparency there because indentation guides are important. They're very, very helpful, but they should not steal your focus, right? Because every time you move your cursor, something is jumping around and I really don't like it. Okay, so let's go back here. Same deal. They're now red. All great. Okay, so the next thing that I recommend you to do, again, like starting from now on, is pretty much everything that you're going to do here is... Um, uh is personal preference okay i don't like this rainbow right i don't like that this curly brace is you know magenta this one is blue this one is yellow to me it looks like a freaking fruit salad so what i'm going to do is i'm going to enable these ones okay so this basically says you know on all levels you know make it red by the way it's exactly the same color just without transparency okay so now all of my curly braces are uh, slightly red it it fits into my theme obviously it doesn't fit into the default theme but that's not the point you can choose whatever you want also it has like these settings for um for an unexpected bracket right so if i had an unexpected bracket it should be it should be highlighted uh very red if i comment it in there we go i was expecting it to be like super red uh i don't know oh yeah there we go okay so this one is now super red uh because i because i set it up here let's see what happens if i yeah so it's slightly red okay so this is like my my red that is like you know very red okay so uh, this one is pretty much for uh, for the bracket paragraph, but you don't need it, right? So I realized at the end that I don't need like any of these settings, right? And that's pretty much it. You can you can play around with these ones, but you know as soon as you enable this one, you know things start to be different, right? So this is where like if you have this active one because you like really want this horizontal one, like this is where you would need this one. Right to bring it back to like the color that you want. Right, so now you have this horizontal one if you really, really wanted to. Right, but I disable it anyway. So in my case, I actually, you know, I don't need this. I don't. I don't need any of these settings, and I even don't need this one. Right. In fact, I'll I'll leave this one. You know, the unexpected one. Okay. So this is how I would recommend you to do it. So I'll probably include at least like this one line in my uh, Scala VS Code profile, but I won't include anything else because I believe it's you know it's already invasive enough. Okay, so this is all you need to do, uh, and I really recommend that, you know, you disable this whole fruit salad. All right, I hope you enjoyed this one. Check out the previous one, and i see you in the next one. For now, as always, it's been Vlad from DevInsideYou.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did, subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you, and if you wish to contribute to tech education, please consider doing so on Patreon, GitHub sponsors, or by joining the YouTube membership program, and let's watch my videos before everyone else. And most importantly, take care. <laughs>